in this SwiftUI course. Our ultimate goal is to develop a fancy pinch and zoom feature by implementing various gestures that this robust framework provides us. By developing this engaging iOS project, you will learn more about how a long press gesture, a double tap gesture, a sophisticated drag gesture, and finally, magnification gestures work together. Not only that, but we will also cover how to use SwiftUI background materials and SF symbols as well. By the end of this engaging course, you will have a functional app with a practical and reusable feature on your iPhone and iPad devices. Getting started. All right, let's get started. First of all, go ahead and open the resources folder downloaded from this section. As usual, there are three additional folders and a supplementary workbook file inside it. You will find the source code of the finished project in the green folder. The source code can help you when you get stuck and need quick assistance. In the pink folder, you will find all the resource materials. Finally, we will save our new project in the blue folder. Great. Now let's open the workbook document and take a quick look at the learning objectives. As you can notice, we will mainly focus on learning about how gestures work in the SwiftUI framework. Besides that, along the way, we will cover the new SwiftUI materials and the SF symbols in a practical way. Are you such excited as I'm? I hope so. Then let's close this document and open the latest version of Xcode downloaded from the App Store. New project. All right. The first step is to create a new project on Xcode's welcome screen as usual. Then as you can see, there is a new pop-up window where we can choose one of the pre-made templates that Apple provides to us. Here we need to select the bare bone basic app template under the iOS project category. After that, click on the next button to go to the project configuration window. Now, we need to enter some necessary information for this new iOS project. For the product name, enter pinch. The next option is to select our team. You can just keep whatever the default setting is here. Of course, if you already have an Apple developer account, logging in here allows you to build your app on a real device. In case you don't have an Apple developer account, you can skip this part and test your app in the iOS simulator on your Mac. For the organization identifier, you just need something unique. We usually enter our website address in reverse order starting with the domain name, then the web address. For example, academy.credo. The bundle identifier is automatically combined from the project name and the organization identifier. The following setting is the user interface. It must be SwiftUI. After that, as we can see, Swift as the primary programming language is already set for us. Finally, since we will not use core data or unit testing in this project, therefore make sure that these options are unchecked. After finishing with these initial settings, please click on the next button. Now we need to tell Xcode where we want to save our SwiftUI project on the computer. Please navigate to the students folder and select it as the destination as I do. Now, click on the create button. And Xcode creates all files and folders for this slick B project. Project preparation. After creating the iOS project, I will change the appearance of the preview. It's not mandatory, so it is up to you to follow me if you like. First, I go to the Settings button of the preview. Then under the Color Scheme section, I switch the appearance from light to dark, as you can see. By doing that, Xcode will add a preferred color scheme modifier to the content view on the canvas. Nothing special is going there. So we can continue the preparation before coding. App Icons Awesome, now we'll continue by adding the prepared high-quality resource materials to the project. To do that, first, we need to open the resources folder and navigate inside the app icon folder, as I show you. Here, in the app icon folder, we need to select all graphics in the sole content.json file by pressing the command plus a keystroke. After that, we can copy every file to the clipboard at once using the command plus C key combination. Now, we're ready to add this set of icons to the Pinch project. Please, jump back to Xcode and select the Assets Catalog in the Project Navigator panel. Next, go ahead and click on the app icon set in the middle panel as I do. By doing that, we should see an empty set of app icons on the right part of the editor. Of course, we can drag and drop each icon from the Finder window into its recommended slot one by one. However, 
For the sake of keeping this video short and sweet, we will take a shortcut and paste them directly from the clipboard. That's being said, please right click or control click on the app icon group as I show you. By doing this, a new context menu will show up. Select the show and finder option from this menu. And Xcode will bring us to the projects icons folder in a new tabulator of the finder. Next, we need to open the app icon set folder and paste everything from the clipboard into this place. When Xcode asks you to replace the existing file, then just click on the replace button and we are good to go. Excellent job so far. As you can notice, behind the finder window, the app icon with its size variants were added to the project. Asset Files The next step is to add all files inside pages and the thumbnails folders to the assets catalog. Please drag and drop these folders into the middle panel as I show you to make this happen. After that, we can close the Finder window and take a quick look at the files we have just added to this project. By clicking on the chevron icons, we can unfold the folders, and with that, we can read the file names in the middle pane. Accent Color After adding all graphic files to this project, we can move on by creating a new accent color that our application will use automatically when it is required. Please select the asset color set in the middle pane and select the empty color set in the editor as I show you. Now in order to follow the upcoming steps, you need to make sure that the attributes inspector panel is visible on the right side of Xcode. If hidden, open the inspector pane on the top right toolbar. Ready? Cool. Now navigate to the color section and activate the drop down menu under the content option as I do. As you can see, there are many lists of color palettes displayed from top to down order. Here we are mainly interested in selecting the label color from the Universal System color palette and making it our accent color. And by selecting this label color, we are good to go. You know, if we do not define a particular accent color, then our application will use the default iOS accent color, which is blue, by the way. You may also know that this label color is made for text labels that contain primary content and this label color will adopt its appearance depending on the environment. For example, we can see text foreground color, border color, and button background color in black on light mode. On the contrary, this specific color is seen as white in dark mode. Splendid. We are almost done with the preparation. Code Structure The next thing that we will do is to set up the code structure by creating a couple of new folders for various purposes. Please go back to the Project Navigator pane on the left sidebar and first select the Content View file as I do. After that, we need to right-click or Control plus click on the file name and choose the new group from selection option in the context menu. Now, we can name this folder screen since it will represent not a smaller area or component but rather a whole screen in the application. Cool. Now let's move on. Please select the main project from the Navigator and create a new empty group. We can do it either with our mouse or by pressing the option plus command plus n shortcut. Then, we can give it the name, view for this group. This is the folder where we can store the smaller views or the reusable components. Now, please go ahead and let's create two more empty groups. Namely, a new folder for the model file that we will create later on. Then let's create another group for the data file we will use at the end of this course. With this, I really want you to practice forward thinking and break the habit of afterward thinking, which is common in other YouTube tutorials. Please keep in mind that decisions about how code organization should be laid down in real-world scenarios are often made on a whiteboard or on a sketch pad beforehand. After all, it is not rocket science to do it early on, not to mention the fact that we can change our minds whenever we want later on. Project Settings Now the only remaining task that we need to nail down is to make sure that our application would work properly in portrait mode exclusively. To make it happen, please select the main project on the sidebar as I do. Here in the settings window under the deployment info section, we need to check the portrait device orientation checkbox. Unfortunately, it will not bring us the desired outcome and we need to refine the settings further. And to do that, we need to switch to the info menu on the tabulator bar 
As I show you, under this info menu, we can see a property list. With this property list, developers can manipulate some aspects of how applications work. Also, as you may already know, this property list consists of key and value pairs in each line, and this is the place where redundant information avoids us forcing the portrait mode. Search for the line where you can see the supported interface orientations for iPhone key option. First, click on the right chevron icon before this list as I do. This action unfolds the extra information that was added when we created this project from the default iOS template at the beginning. Watch out for the two landscape values in this list item. These are the landscape left and right orientations. We do not need them since these options prevent us from using the app in only portrait mode. To get rid of them, simply click on the gray minus button as I show you. Only the portrait option remained under this setting if you did it correctly. Also, please do not worry about the supported interface orientation for iPad list item at the bottom of this list since this simple app will work without any layout glitches on tablet. Okay, now, after doing all necessary prep work and other initial settings, we are ready to build and run the pinch project either in the simulator or on a real device as usual. So let's do it right now. To do that, please click on the run button. And let's check out what's happening on the screen. If everything goes well, then we can see the standard welcome message on the screen. And when we close the application, a new app icon should be added to the home screen. Excellent job so far. In this short tutorial, we have just prepared everything. So later on, we can focus on developing a relatively simple application with a complex pinch and zoom feature. Are you ready to develop this impressive app while having some fun with SwiftUI? I hope so. Then see you at the next class.